and welcome to Wild on the Far East. In the next hour, we're going to take you on a whirlwind trip of Hong Kong, Singapore, Bali, and my personal favorite, the sex clubs in Bangkok. So get ready to go wild on the Far East. Welcome to Paradise on Earth. We're at the Amandari Hotel in Bali, one of the most exotic, sexy, and secluded hotels ever. And when you arrive at this beautiful hotel, gorgeous little girls like this throw flowers at your feet. I mean, who could ask for more? Every room at the Amandari has its own private garden and swimming pool with the most spectacular views. And the best part is that it's completely free of prying eyes, perfect for all you naughty honeymoon couples. When Wild on Bali returns, we will take you through one of the most sacred and holy temples on the entire island. One of the best things about being on an island is that every time you get thirsty, you can simply pull the car over, get a coconut off the tree and drink it. Let me taste. Mmm, yeah. so sweet. <laughs> Delicious. These are known as holy monkeys because they live in the area around the temple. They truly have the most amazing life. They get fed constantly and no one will ever try and kill them as long as they don't leave the area surrounding the temple. And they're looking for fleas. <laughs> One of the most important and holy parts of the Hindu tradition is the cremation of a dead body, which they believe ensures reincarnation. We're in the middle of one now, and the tower behind me is holding the dead body. We're going to walk down to the cemetery where we're going to watch the body get burnt. It's all very eerie. The Amun resorts are known worldwide for the most exceptional service. This is the Amun Puri on the island of Phuket, Thailand. And when you arrive at this hotel, they cover your bed and bath with rose petals. And the moral of the story is never wear a short skirt on such a windy day. <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Guy Hayward. And where are you vacationing from? Sydney, Australia. Okay, what do you love best about the Amun resorts? Because they have completely blown me away. Well, absolutely. They blew me away a long time ago. That's why I keep coming back every year. Um, it's the whole thing is a lifestyle issue. It's I don't feel like I'm going to a hotel on vacation. I'm I'm going to a home um, where the staff know me and and treat me extremely well, um, and I just have an incredible lifestyle experience. And the service, oh, the rose petals on the bed. It's like perfect for honeymooners. Oh, it is. It's beautiful. The people are incredible. Um, the the staff ratio is extremely high. I think they have about seven staff to one guest or something like that and um, they're just so attentive they can't do enough for you I mean it's incredible it really is well thank you very much enjoy the rest of your vacation thank you I will hi what do you love best about Phuket waking up in the morning to a beautiful sunny day ordering a young coconut juice going for a swim in this delightful ocean and contemplating my life I know it's the best thank you Thank you for joining me on my Far East adventure. I'm Kimberly Frickleton and I'll see you same time, same place next week as we head off to Fiji. Hi, I'm Kimberly Frickleton and you're watching NBC, America's number one station. Okay, so our next guest is on a quick visit to South Africa from New York. She's, took, she's taken London by storm and now she's taking a big bite out of the Big Apple. And her career started right here on KTV, so let's all give a warm welcome to Kimberly Frickleton. Woo! That's welcome. so sweet, thank you. Hi Kim, it's so good to have you back, we really missed you. Thank you, it's good to see you, you're looking really, really beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> now what have you been doing since you left KTV? Okay, well I have been living in London for the last four years, and I had two shows. The one show was called Terra Towers, and it was like a game show that took place in a haunted house. And the other show that I present is my favorite. It's a travel program called Raw TV. And we travel around the world and we take a look at different countries, different cultures, the fashion, the music, how the people relate. That's a really, really great show. Cool, so what's the biggest and best thing that you've done? Would that include those two? Oh, definitely. We did a trip to Hawaii oh, about wow. two months ago. And it was my dream to go to Hawaii. And we spent four weeks filming on the five different islands. And we did scuba diving. We flew oh. over an active volcano and we had this bright red lava flowing out and we were like so close and I learned how to do Hawaiian dancing and that was just for me. Right, with the skirt and the... The skirt and <gasps> the coconuts <laughs> and, and I, brought, I brought the little dress home for Halloween. Oh, cool. So that has been the highlight of my career definitely so far. But then it seems like you really enjoyed London so what made you move to New York? Well, I was really, really happy in London and then in August of this year it was our hiatus which means our show goes on break for summer vacation and I decided to go and visit New York because I'd heard so much about this big city 
and unfortunately I completely fell in love with it. So I decided, okay, I don't, I'm not ready to move back to London. I went and I saw some agents and there was an interest. I managed to get a work visa and my two week vacation lasted three months. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but now, um, have you ever decided like whether you wanted to move to movies from television? I would love to be an actress, but I can't act. I am <laughs> so bad. I've done one movie and I was appalling and it was like so stressful for me because I kept saying the director is going to kick me out any second he's <laughs> going to realize that I can't act and he's going to say we've miscast her so no I'm definitely not an actress I love presenting and, and that's just what I want to stay doing so what's the difference between TV in the UK and the USA compared to South African television I think the standard in South Africa is really really getting better and better but the actual method of presenting is so different like in South Africa we're very calm we sit we stare at the camera it's very classy whereas in London the camera is constantly moving it is this far from your face it is way over the top and it's very very draining energetically and in America they've kind of just managed to get the right balance between the two now between London and New York have you met any really famous inspirational people and how did you meet them the most exciting person I've ever met was Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, with, with the show, Whoa. with the show Roll TV, we're very lucky because we get we get invited to all the movie premieres. Oh. And normally, what happens is a star will will come to the show. He won't even watch the movie, and then he leaves. And Leonardo stayed. He watched the entire movie. He stayed for the after party. He danced. He stayed there till everyone else left, and he was just incredible. And is he just it's, as good looking in real life as he is on TV? He TV's? wears lipstick. I swear what? to you, and, and he's fine with it. He'll say, I wear lipstick. He wears like a light pink lipstick and it gives his lips that beautiful color. He wears lipstick. Okay. And then when I was in New York, I was training and I met um, Jerry Seinfeld and that to me was like really exciting. He came up to me and he said, where is that weird accent from? And he is so similar to his character in the show as he is in real life. But I still say the most inspirational person I have ever met or interviewed is still President Mandela. I worked oh. with him in London last year and you know what it's like you have, when you build someone up to be something so incredible and mm. so awe-inspiring, no one can live up to it mm. and he did. He was just so amazing. Now what do you miss from South Africa? Do we have about two hours? <laughs> I miss so much. You know, you, you always, always remember the good things. I miss mostly the weather. It is so cold. And when I get back to New York now, it is below freezing. And I miss having a braai at the swimming pool. There is no such thing over there. I miss my family. My family all live here. That's why I keep coming back to visit. I miss jacaranda trees. I miss the South African accent. And the one thing I cannot do overseas is watch a rugby match. I cannot watch the Springboks because I get so homesick. You know when they sing the national anthem? Mm. I just almost want to cry. So. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us on What's Hot today. Come back real soon and good luck in New York. No, you come visit me, it's better. Okay, cool. <laughs>